Welcome to the famous Champagne region of France. Only about a four and a half hour drive from Amsterdam, this area is often our first choice when we feel like we need a quick getaway. And we're excited to show you some of our favorite places around here. Filled with great food, beautiful surroundings, and of course, lots of champagne, there is plenty to see, do, and eat here. Stay tuned to discover this amazing region with us. Welcome to Turks Who Eat. We're Alex and Mehmet, a couple who loves to travel and eat. We also bring our dog, Bindi, along with us for as many adventures as possible. We love traveling, and eating local foods tends to be the highlight of our travels. We love to discover the local dishes and learn how to make them ourselves. Follow along with us as we explore the world, discover local foods, and attempt to recreate them. The Champagne region is located in northeastern France. It's only about an hour train ride from Paris, which is hard to believe because the atmosphere here is much calmer and quieter. The two main cities, Roms and Epparnay, serve as cultural and historical hubs, and there are also plenty of small villages to explore. We're starting off this trip with a few days in Epparnay. Epparnay is well known for its famed Avenue de Champagne, this street holds many of the most famous and beautiful champagne houses. Here, beneath these opulent estates, lies a hidden world filled with labyrinths of extensive caves where millions of bottles of the most coveted champagnes are aging, making this street one of the most valuable in the world. Despite its opulent appearance and fancy reputation, this street is very approachable for tourists and many of the champagne houses open their doors for tastings and tours where you can learn their specialities and more about the champagne making process. Our absolute favorite house is a producer called Michel Gonet. What sets Michel Gonet apart is not only their great champagne, which is probably the favorite one we've ever tasted, but also their approach to production. As a grower-producer, they cultivate all the grapes used in their bottles on their own land, a practice that's not common among the larger, more commercial producers. Their long-aged Blanc de Blancs, made exclusively from white grapes, are particularly special. Here, you'll experience tasting a very high-quality champagne with very small bubbles, rich taste, and only a subtle sweetness, as most of their bottles are produced with very low doses of sugar. On each visit here, we've been impressed with the warmth and knowledge of the staff. This, coupled with the serene atmosphere of their tasting room and patio, make a visit to Michel Gonet very memorable. Walking down the Avenue de Champagne, you'll encounter some of the most famous and well-known champagne houses. And while we usually prefer the smaller producers, these big houses are definitely also worth a visit for their beautiful surroundings and the mazes of caves storing bottles of champagne underneath them. At the end of the avenue closest to town, you'll find Moëté Chandon, arguably one of the most famous champagnes in the world. A tour here will take you through one of the most luxurious houses in the area and showcase their vast 17 miles of chalk cellar tunnels full of bottles developing their flavor and awaiting their time to be sold. One other favorite house that we have to mention is Le Crec Briand. Still walkable from the center of Aparnay, Le Crec Briand is just a little off the path of the main avenue. They have a beautiful house and offer tours of their production process followed by an in-depth tasting of some of their most special bottles. We find Le Crec Briand particularly interesting because they are dedicated to creating champagne in a biodynamic way and are often trying new techniques such as aging some of their wine in the sea or in gold-lined barrels. While we've visited this area quite a few times, we continue to discover new gems, and a new discovery on this trip was the house of Comtesse Lafond. 
This is another beautiful old house with stunning views of the surrounding nature. Here, you can get a much more intimate tasting experience than you can at some of the larger houses. We enjoyed a great tasting here and especially loved their 2014 vintage. Of course, you'll need some great food to go along with all of this champagne. And for that, we recommend heading to nearby Roms. You can get to Roms either by a quick train ride or a car ride, and here you'll find everything from traditional French bistros to bakeries full of freshly baked pastries and even several Michelin-starred restaurants. One of our favorite stops in Roms is a bistro called La Tablier. Located in the center of Roms, this bustling bistro offers a variety of dishes and always feels welcoming. I'm particularly partial to this place because they offer salads, or at least as close to a healthy salad as you can get in France, which I always feel like I need after a few days here. Another great traditional bistro is La Brasserie de Boulingrin. Here, they have many indulgent dishes such as fresh oysters and marrow bone, all in a very welcoming and authentic setting. If you're looking for something a bit fancier, La Lambuc is a great choice. The bottom level of this restaurant is set in an old cellar, which is the perfect ambiance for a meal in Champagne. On top of the great atmosphere, the food and wine list here are excellent. We started off our meal with some escargot in a foamy, garlicky sauce. We had some meaty mains of beef and lamb, both cooked perfectly, and topped it all off with a dessert of fruity ice cream and constant chocolate. In addition to the great restaurants, we love to explore the bakeries, cheese shops, and wine bars in this area. You can find tons of great food here. A must try is the local Schaus cheese. This cheese has a rich buttery taste from its smooth yet slightly crumbly center and is covered with a thin bloomy rind. It's an excellent cheese to pair with champagne. We're going to use this cheese in an upcoming recipe to make a spring-inspired charousse and asparagus tart, so keep an eye out for that. Besides the champagne and the food, Roms is a charming small city with a lot of history and culture. While you're in Roms, you should also check out some of the local historic landmarks. The most famous landmark being the Roms Cathedral. Located in the center and towering over the city, you can't miss the cathedral. This cathedral served as the coronation site for French kings for over a thousand years, starting in the year 816. The original structure suffered a fire, and the cathedral that stands today has been there since the 11th century. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is admired for its architectural beauty and detailed interior. Similar to Epernay, Brahms is home to many champagne houses, and there are plenty of opportunities to do tastings and visits here as well. On this trip, we particularly enjoyed our visit to G.H. Mum. We had a very detailed tour of the history of the house and its cellars, and learned that they have created the first champagne that is made for space, which we thought was pretty interesting. Our tour was followed by a tasting of some of their most prestigious blends. While Roms and Epernay are the largest cities in this region, it's definitely worth taking some time to explore the nearby smaller villages while you're visiting. One that we suggest is the village of Hautevilliers. Hautevilliers is famous for being the home, and now the burial place, of Dom Perignon. Dom Perignon served as the cellar master at the Abbey of Hautevilliers from 1668 until his death in 1715, and is considered to be the father of Champagne. Today, you can visit the Abbey and pay respects at his burial site. Beyond the Abbey, the village is a charming place to visit and wander through. The narrow streets are filled with quaint restaurants, artisan shops, and cozy tasting rooms. It was quite rainy the day that we visited, 
but we stopped into a restaurant called O36, where we had some chicken and lentil stews that warmed us right up. As usual, Bindi accompanied us on this trip, and this area is typically very dog friendly. While it's always a good idea to check ahead of time, dogs of Bindi's size are usually allowed for tastings, but not into the cellar tours. Along the Avenue de Champagne, there are plenty of spots with outdoor patios where your dog can join you while you enjoy some bubbles. We also found all of the restaurants to be dog friendly, as well as most of the hotels and Airbnbs that we considered. Brahms also has a large park in the center of the city, which is great for a leisurely dog walk. We hope you enjoyed discovering the Champagne region with us. It is truly one of our favorite places, and we definitely recommend visiting it. Do you have recommendations of favorite places that we missed? Let us know in the comments. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe if you want to see where we're headed next.